ahead, Ray. Ray, after um, with, with the ebb and flow of this game, uh, the back and forth, how much does it take out of you? I mean, how do you feel after these uh, 12 innings? And also, how would you rank this one among all the um, classic games, especially between the Gamecocks and the Tigers? Well, we've had so many. There's no question about it over the years. Um, it's been incredible. It's it's great. And like I said yesterday, um, Coach Leggett and I, we, we I know a lot of people think we're entirely different, but we're very similar. That we like we like to compete. We like the competition, and um, both of us are very intense. We appreciate the game. We appreciate the rivalry. We've had tremendous games, and um, you know, I the first part of your question, I it takes something out of you. I live vicariously through our guys. I mean, I I take swings. I strike out. I make an error. I mean, I, I live through them. It's part of it, and. Um, I'm passionate as they are, and and then I try to make sure that they stay stay in the moment in the dugout, but play with tremendous awareness, compete, take the ups with the downs. It's a hard game. There's a lot of things that happen in baseball that are not good. It's it's not a game that makes you feel good all the time. You just have to love it. You started playing it when you were little to have fun, and as you get older, it gets more serious. But you have to go back to having fun at it. And win, lose, or draw, you sort of have to respect it and appreciate it. And, you know, we, we've lost our share in this rivalry. And, it's, you know, since I've been here, I'm, I don't know the record exactly, but it's probably close to being even. We've had a lot of great games, and this one ranks up there among those. They had a chance to finish it off. You know, we were out front there in the middle innings, and uh, they got a couple of big hits to put up that three spot. You know, it's it goes and comes, and... You know, big hits and big plays, and you just try to hang on. And um, it was a great game. Ray, um, there were two plays in, in this game that probably would qualify as two of the more dramatic plays I would imagine you'd ever seen. The, the Ferguson play where he misses and has to come back at home, and then the, the Matthews one off, off the top of the wall, both of which could have won the game. You've been around baseball for a long time. Could you just kind of describe your emotions when you saw those plays because you had a pretty good perspective there from your dugout. Well, I, I think, you know, the play, the play on Ferguson, he, he probably was going to be out with a pretty good throw. Uh, maybe it was off the mark a little bit, but, you know, as a runner, you don't know where, whether it's going to be on the line or not. So he took an angle where he could go behind the plate and reach back and tag, all, although he didn't get close enough to reach back. And uh, keep him made a great play of picking the ball up and staying on it. Um, and that's, you know, that, those, those, those things kind of happen. And what was the other one you were talking about? The Matthews one off the top. Oh, you know, Matthews hits that ball. Immediately I'm thinking double. And, of course, you know, somebody jumps in front of me. And, <laughs> and uh, then I see uh, the left fielder, I guess, catch it in the air. And I'm, I'm what, what happened? They said it hit the top of the fence. It came back in the air. So, uh, actually, Drew Meyer told me, he said it, it, it hit the pad and it just – Instead of going over, it came back and he picked it off in the air. I'm thinking, my, I didn't think it was going to go that far to begin with. I know he hit it hard. I didn't think it was going to get up enough. Um, crazy. I, th there were so many things that happened in that game. The play you mentioned earlier where um, Joy backhanded the ball, he had the awareness to know there was no, no other play. If I'm going to make a play, I got to, I got to throw a little backhand over to, to LB, and LB had the awareness to scramble back to the back because he had to break toward the ball immediately. And then he has awareness to go back and – Roth gets an out at third on the bunt. You know, we, we work on that in practice. I went out, I said, Roth, you, you got to see if you can make a pitch here to make a play to limit the damage. And then they got some big hits after that. But um, so, so many things happened, really. It was one of those games that I, I don't know how it came across on television, but being here in person, it, it was tremendous. Our fans, uh, the best, you know, they stayed with us, they hung with us, nobody left. And, um, Maybe they didn't want it to end. Maybe we, we wanted to play a few more free baseball, but it's certainly you know, one of the, the great games between us and Clemson. Ray, can you explain the edge that you guys have on Clemson right now these past few years? Obviously, huge games in Omaha a few years ago. This year's series, you're now at 3-1. You have the extra inning win in Charleston. Can you kind of explain right now why they're, why the edge is on your side? Is it the experience and success you've had in the postseason, or is it something else? I can't. I, you know, I, I think we're even. Uh, yeah, you know, I. You know, you talk about this year. I guess we won three out of four, but uh, you know, it, it could be two and two. It could be one and three. 
I don't, I don't feel like uh, you know, we have the edge or we do anything better than they do. I, I don't feel that's the case. They're, they're very, very good. And when we play, you have those games. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter what has happened in the past. It's two great programs that, you know, you, you step it up. You, you raise your level of play. And, and you get after it as hard as you can for as long as you can. And so I, I don't, you know, as I sit here, I, I don't feel like there's any edge. It, it's just... Um, you know, two, two teams that get after it. Jack said he hadn't seen that particular interference call made in baseball this year from what he had seen, ACC or whatever. I'm wondering if you, I know you scour the college baseball scene daily, uh, have you heard of that particular kind of interference call being made this year? I, I don't think I've seen it this year necessarily, but it, it did happen in the SEC tournament a few years ago when we played LSU, same type call. I mean, the rule now says you go straight into the bag as long as you're near the bag, over the bag, you're okay. But you can't have your hands up, make contact excessively, and those kind of things. I don't know exactly what happened on that call. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask for an explanation. It went in our favor, so I just took it and moved on. And so, but you know, I, some good umpires here. These these umpires are qualified to be here by performance. So, um, you know, I feel like they they probably got it right. right. I don't think you make that call unless you got it right. I don't think that that's one you, you make unless you're absolutely sure. Ray, you've been going with you know young guys all year in big SEC series, but when Beal, Pancake Dantzler, et cetera, come up with big plays against veteran Clemson players, what's that like in the NCAA tournament for that for those guys? Well, the fact that you you, you know they made an investment, they've been through it, that they've paid their they paid their dues played a lot of baseball now and that's what you hope happens. It's hard for them in the beginning. I, um, you know, like I said earlier in the year, this is the youngest team I've ever put on the field. And, and you know, it's one reason I, I D8 Sean Sullivan today. I just wanted to get a little bit older. I just wanted to have a little more veteran experience out there. But, you know, those game, those guys that, you know, haven't been around before, um, they've been through a lot of these, these things this year. And, and you, you feel good for them that their experience you know, now pays off for them a little bit because they've been through it. it. It's tough. And, you know, thinking about Joey, he, he's, I mean, he's the quarterback. He's a shortstop. It, there's nowhere to hide. You know, you, he's, we throw him out there from day one and he knew there were going to be some tough days. And he, he struggled at times emotionally. He, you know, he took it hard. He wants to, you know, he wants to be the guy that I'm playing in the middle of the field. And I've got to be good offensively. I've got to be good defensively. And when it didn't go as well as he wanted to at times, he took it hard. It wasn't, you know, it was like, okay, we'll get him tomorrow. No, he, he felt bad about what happened today. So he's, you know, he had to go through that and he had to grow a little bit. And um, he's, he's competing hard. I mean, he, he's, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly content with, with where Pancake is right now. He, he fights it as hard as he can, he does the best he can, and his composure is really good right now. Ray, uh, who pitches tomorrow, and will you hold anybody back, uh, like relievers, just in case you have to play on Monday? Uh, Jordan Montgomery will, will start tomorrow, and um, no, we'll, we'll, we'll pitch the guys that are available. Um, Matt Price, I'm sure, will be out. I think he got in the 60s, I believe. But uh, he'll be out. Uh, Webb might be okay. Bell, uh, Bill will probably you know, have something in him tomorrow. So we'll just have to evaluate it. Coach Myers will tell me what, what the scenario looks like. But, um, you know, we you know, we fought through this game today and, and, you know, we have a chance now to play at 4 o'clock again. Ray, with, with you and Jack, he was in talking about some situations that he expected you to do <coughs> in the game, what you did. Does he surprise you? Do you kind of know what he's going to do, like, he knows what you're going to do, you know, strategically. I'm not talking about what the players do at the plate and stuff, but do you kind of know each other's moves pretty well? Well, we, we've been doing this for a while yeah. and together. And, you know, we've, you know, how many games have we played? I don't know, what, 50, 60? And since I've been here, I, I don't know how many it's been. But I, I think that, you know, we, we probably realize each other's tendencies and you know, sometimes we go, go against it, but I think we both know how each other manages and, you know, then the then the players go out and play. So, it's um. You know, th these games th these games are really fun, and, and you know you don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. You feel bad when you lose, uh, but you know, it's like I said yesterday. If you know you you said hey. You know we're gonna 
we're going to get in a big bus and go off to a deserted island. We're going to play the best out of seven, and we're going to have dinner together at night. Um, you know, there'd be some there'd be some fun in that. <laughs> we just couldn't do this after every game. That would be that would be way too much. But they, these guys love to play this game. And like I said, nobody you don't like to lose. Nobody likes to lose. But you love to you love to get in a game like this. You know, um, I've been in. This, I played I played college baseball, and I, I watched it grow and. Uh, what's the, the fans start coming in the media and all those things and we get a chance to have a game against a team in our state that showcases a great rivalry uh, not only in the state but on a national level and that's that's tremendous and you know like Marz Marzilli said that you know he wanted to be a part of it. that's what he that's why he's here he wanted to be in this environment and um, that's the way the, the good ones are. They want they want to play in it and mix it up and do the best they can. Ray, talk about a Michael Ross outing today. He doesn't get the decision, but you guys just seem to find a way to win when he's on the mound. Just talk about the performance he had. You know, he battled. He he had that one inning that looked like it was going to get away from him and you know, he, he battled back into it and, and you know gave us gave us six in the third and you know, only th three earned runs and he, he scuffled a little bit out there, but you know, he's he's that kind of guy. You're gonna have a chance. You know, even if it's not a good day for him, you're still going to have a chance. And then if he's really special, you know, you, you're going to have a, a really good chance. But, you know, he, he battled for us and kept us alive. And, you know, as, as was mentioned earlier, Gossett was outstanding. I mean, his stuff was good, and he could hammer. He could stick the fastball when he wanted to. His breaking ball was good. Um, he, was hard to, he was hard to get to today. He, he certainly did his job out there. Ray, you mentioned how close these two teams are. Uh, the play is going against you late in the game. Matthews home run coming back in in play, and, and uh, the runner being tagged out at home. Did you think that the law of averages might get to your team, and, and this one may not be one that y'all can pull out? Well, and, and Felder's play that he made on Pancake in right field. There, I mean, yeah, they they made some plays, and you know I can still see Wilkerson's ball shooting by Dancer's glove just out of reach, and then Brittle boom the other way right by LB's glove again just out of reach, and you go man, you got. To win this game, you got to get some atom balls. You got to try to stay out of a, stay out of a big inning, stay out of a jam there. And then on the offensive side, we weren't getting those. Uh, you know, Chase should have probably scored on that. I think he didn't have a great secondary. He checked up a little bit to see the ball and didn't, didn't score. So yeah, you, you feel like, well, hey, how many chances are you going to get? And you know, then even at the end, when we when we when we put the hit and run on and Marzelli executes, Pancake gets the third. Walker's a little anxious, shallow fly ball, and you know LB gets gets down there. So it, it's uh it's tough. It's games like this can go either way. You just try to you try to hang in there and uh, to get a chance to make something good happen for your team. Can you talk about in the twelfth when you saw and changed and took the bun off and went with the hit and run? What did you see in that situation? Well, it crossed my mind. I went out and talked to Marzilli. He got a, he got a pretty good fastball. Brady started lighting that thing up pretty good and. You know, he bunted, he bunted a pitch straight back, was a little bit up in the zone. And sometimes when you get a guy that can elevate that fastball, you may end up popping up that bunt. And Schaefer was, he was on top of him, you know. And, and we got a play where you can slash. And I said, do you feel comfortable trying to steer a ball on that side? And, you know, he, you know with a fake butt slash, he said, not so much. I said, okay, well, check, check when you get back. We may just hit and run here. We'll get an opportunity. And... He was able to drop one in, and, and Pancake gets to third. So, you know, it, players execute, good things happen, and you know, if he pops up there, it should have bunted. You know, you, but we might have bunted, and, and Schaefer might have made a play at second if he was able to pick it up. Uh, 18 in a row in the NCAA tournament. Can you get your hands around that? No. Nah. No, I, I uh, first time that happened, we were in Omaha, and uh, I, I was back at the hotel. Something ran by the ticker at the bottom of the screen, and I, I didn't know what it was. I, I didn't even, I didn't know. I s said South Carolina, so I'm like, that's interesting. So I waited for it to come back. I didn't know, I didn't know what it was about. I, it took me a minute to figure it out. I, I just thought maybe it was. You know, maybe Coach Spurry was making news or something. You know, and, and um, I, and then I the, started talking about the streak, and I'm like, wow, that's. I, yeah, I guess we did win a few, but and then I guess the next day Texas said, not so fast. We won more than you did, and I said, oh, okay, but I, I don't think about those things. I mean, it's just 
You just carry the rabbit's foot for as long as you can. Andrew should tell you some of that stuff. I don't listen to Andrew. <laughs> <laughs>